evidence. Sources of information about this service organization Obtaining a Type 1 or Type 2 report from the service organization's auditor A Type 1 report provides a description of the design of the controls at the service organization prepared by the management of the service organization. It includes a report by the service auditor providing an opinion on the description of the system and the suitability of the controls. A Type 2 report is a report on the description, design and operating effectiveness of controls at the service organization. It contains a report prepared by management of the service organization. It includes a report by the service auditor providing an opinion on the description of the system, the suitability of the controls, the effectiveness of the controls, and a description of the tests of controls performed by the auditor. If the auditor intends to use a report from a service auditor, they should consider the competence and independence of the service organization auditor, the standards under which the report was issued, contacting the service organization through the client, visiting the service organization, using another auditor to perform tests of controls, Responding to assessed risks The auditor should determine whether sufficient appropriate evidence is available from the client and if not, perform further procedures or use another auditor to perform procedures on their behalf. If controls are expected to operate effectively, obtain a Type 2 report if available and consider whether the date covered by the report is appropriate for the audit, whether the client has any complementary controls in place, the time elapsed since the tests of controls were performed, whether the tests of controls performed by the auditor are relevant to the financial statement assertions, perform tests of controls at the service organization. Use another auditor to perform tests of controls. The auditor should inquire of the client whether the service organization has reported any frauds to them or whether they are aware of any frauds, non-compliance or uncorrected misstatements affecting the financial statements of the entity. Impact on the auditor's report If sufficient appropriate evidence has not been obtained, a qualified or disclaimer of opinion will be issued. The use of a service organization auditor is not mentioned in the auditor's report unless required by law or regulation. Reference to the work of a service organization auditor may be included in a report containing a modified opinion if it is relevant to the understanding of the modification. This does not diminish the auditor's responsibility for the opinion. Benefits to the audit Independence Because the service organization is external to the client, the audit evidence derived from it is regarded as being more reliable than evidence generated internally by the client. Competence Because the service organization is a specialist, it may be more competent in executing its role than the client's internal department resulting in fewer errors. Possible reliance on the service organization's auditors It may be possible for the client's auditors to confirm information directly with the service organization's auditors. Drawbacks The main disadvantage of outsourced services 
from the auditor's point of view concerns access to records and information. Auditors generally have statutory rights of access to the client's records and to receive answers and explanations that they consider necessary to enable them to form their opinion. They do not have such rights over records and information held by a third party, such as a service organization. Related parties, owners, etc., and those related to them. Joint control, direct or indirect control, significant influence, the entity, key management and those related to them, control or influence, subsidiaries, associates, joint ventures, pension scheme. Risks with related party transactions There is nothing wrong with an entity dealing with a related party. Related party transactions may increase the potential for the financial results to be manipulated as transactions may be carried out on a basis other than arm's length. In these circumstances, it is appropriate for such transactions to be brought to the attention of shareholders. IAS 24 Related Party Disclosures The auditor should obtain sufficient appropriate evidence that the financial statements achieve fair presentation of the related party relationships and transactions and have been accounted for in accordance with the financial reporting framework. Disclosure should be made of the following. The nature of the related party relationship. Information about the transactions, including the amount and any balances outstanding at the year end. Any allowance for doubtful receivable or expense recognized in respect of irrecoverable debts. If transactions have not been disclosed in accordance with those requirements, the potentially significant deficiency in the internal control system should be reported to those charged with governance. Even where related parties have been identified, it can be difficult to spot associated transactions with them for the following reasons. Directors may be reluctant to disclose transactions particularly in the case of family members. Transactions may not be easy to identify from the accounting systems because they are not separately identified from normal transactions. Transactions may be concealed in whole or in part from auditors for fraudulent purposes. As a result of the risks above, related party transactions are generally deemed material by nature. Indicators of Related Party Transactions Related parties are often difficult to identify in practice. It can be hard to establish exactly who or what are the related parties of an entity. Indicators of Related Party Transactions include Transactions which are overly complex Transactions with abnormal terms of trade Transactions that appear not to have a logical business reason. Transactions that are not processed in the usual or routine way. High volumes of transactions or high value or otherwise significant transactions with individual customers or suppliers. Unrecorded transactions such as rent-free accommodation or services provided at no cost. Risk Assessment Procedures The auditor should obtain an understanding of the identity of related parties, nature of related party relationships 
and the type and purpose of transactions with these related parties. The controls established by the client, such as approval and authorization of the transactions. Further audit procedures. Inspecting prior year working papers. Inspecting shareholder records for details of principal shareholders. Inspecting minutes of shareholders' meetings and other relevant minutes and records. Inquiring of other auditors involved with the audit. Inspecting the entity's income tax returns and other information supplied to the regulatory authorities. Where not prohibited by law or regulation, the auditor should Confirm transactions with banks, law firms, or other intermediaries. Confirm the terms of related party transactions with the related party. Read the financial statements or other relevant financial information of the related party for evidence of the transactions. If the auditor identifies related parties that were not previously identified or disclosed, they should Communicate that information to the rest of the engagement team Request that management identifies all transactions with the related party and inquire why they failed to identify them Perform appropriate substantive procedures relating to transactions with these entities. Reconsider the risk that other, unidentified, related parties may exist. Evaluate the implications if the non-disclosure by management appears intentional. If the auditor identifies related party transactions outside the entity's normal course of business, they should also inspect the underlying contracts or agreements to establish the business rationale, the terms of the transaction, whether appropriate disclosures have been made, obtain evidence that the transactions were appropriately authorized. Accounting Estimates ISA 540 Revised Auditing Accounting Estimates and Related Disclosures requires the auditor to obtain an understanding necessary to allow the auditor to identify and assess the risks of material misstatement relating to accounting estimates. This involves obtaining an understanding of the entity's environment, including the requirements of the financial reporting framework and regulatory factors relevant to accounting estimates, the entity's internal controls related to accounting estimates, including the control activities, the need for specialized skills, and the governance in place over the financial reporting process relevant to estimates and how management reviews the outcome of previous accounting estimates and responds to the results of the review. The auditor must separately assess inherent risk and control risk when assessing the risk of material misstatement relating to accounting estimates. When assessing inherent risk, the auditor should consider the degree to which the estimate is subject to estimation uncertainty, the degree of complexity and subjectivity involved in the method, assumptions and data used to make the estimate, the degree of complexity and subjectivity used in the selection of management's point estimate, When responding to the risk of material misstatement in the accounting estimates, 
the auditor must perform the following procedures. Obtain evidence from subsequent events. Test how management made the estimate. Develop an auditor's point, estimate or range. Examples of balances where estimates are relevant include Defined benefit pension schemes Share-based payment schemes Investments in shares Investment property Property within PPE if the revaluation model is used Net assets of a subsidiary at the acquisition date